Good morning, everyone. I'll call to order a meeting of the Board of Regents of the University of Wisconsin System. Would the secretary please read the roll? Uh, Regent Bartell. Regent Bradley. Regent Berman. Present. Regent Present. Kiesler. Here. Regent Train. Here. Regent Keene. Here. Regent Davis. Here. Regent Falbo. Here. Regent Lofton. Here. Regent McPike. Regent Pruitt. Here. Regent Rosenzweig. Here. Regent Salas. Regent Shields. Here. Regent Smith. Regent Spector. Here. Regent Thomas. Here. Regent Walsh. Here. The quorum is present. Thank you. We didn't answer. Did we call? I knew you were here. <laughs> um, as you heard when the secretary called the roll, um, Regent Milton McPike is not here today. Uh, Milt called me and he asked that I share with you that his cancer is back. And uh, he said he needs to take some time to just think very differently about how, how life is going to unfold for him now. And uh, he, he is a man of prayer. And uh, if you are a person of prayer, I think Milt would like uh, any help that you would like to give to him. He said that he is um, bolstered by the fact that he has a very strong family and that he has a very strong faith. And he said to keep his chair warm, that once he figures out how he's going to handle things with this turn of events, he intends to be back and contribute as much as he can contribute. Mm -hmm. uh, Milt knows that we've got a pretty important turning point today in the history of the UW system. We have been on a, a gradual building block discussion of how we as a board and how the system can address the needs of this state. We started with the growth agenda for Wisconsin. We have been advocating strenuously for that. Uh, we've got quite a bit of wind behind our sails from uh, a broad spectrum of constituents in the state of Wisconsin. We have uh, some other people who don't know whether we can afford to pursue the growth agenda for Wisconsin. But most people, as they have responded to us, seem to be saying that they, they wonder whether we can afford not to pursue this for the prosperity of the state. Going from the growth agenda for Wisconsin, which is primarily a vision that plays out in a budget proposal. Today we want to talk about something that's much larger than a budget process, um, a much larger process for homing in on where this vision of what Wisconsin is going to need from its public higher education system in order to be prosperous. That is our strategic planning process that we started talking about after the June meeting when Dennis Jones appeared before us in Milwaukee. So to begin to unveil the ideas that have been worked on by a number of people, uh, very, very, um, with a lot of focused energy is President Riley. I'll turn it over to him. Thank you. Thank you, Regent Bradley. Good morning, everybody. Uh, and I just wanted to add to what uh, Regent Bradley had to say about Regent McPike. I had a chance to speak with him as well, and, and he told me that um, his service on this board, working with all of you, has been one of the real uh, highlights of his professional career, and he very much looks forward to continuing to do that, and I know he means it. And uh, it's one of those conversations where somebody's conveying bad news about his own health to you, but he manages to make you feel good in the process. That's the kind of person that, that Milt is. We're lucky to have him as a region. Uh, well, um, we wanted to, as Regent Bradley said, uh, talk a little bit about 
our strategic planning process. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I want, first of all, at the start to acknowledge the yeoman's work that uh, Senior Executive Vice President Don Mash has done over a number of months now working with a wide variety of uh, constituents and colleagues to get us to the point where we are now and then uh, when uh, Senior Vice President uh, Rebecca Martin uh, came on and joined us, she has a lot of experience in other institutions in strategic planning and she's jumped right in and we've had very, very good work by both of those uh, Senior Vice Presidents and good colleagues in getting us to the point where we are now. So I wanted to acknowledge both of them. Um, you, you may remember that at the May meeting of this board, I talked uh, in, through a PowerPoint that we were calling then the growth agenda and beyond big picture ideas and I began to broach some of the, the major issues I thought we needed to confront in the course of the strategic planning. Then in June, you'll recall over at the Milwaukee meeting, we had Dennis Jones join us and talk about the, the really a uh, big national picture and how we uh, fit into that, uh, how other states that he believed has, uh, have been successful in, in using their public university to advance their, uh, their economic and general well-being have done it. And then in July, we had the region retreat uh, with Tom Ingram and discussion about uh, this board's role in, in that. Uh, before that June meeting, the chancellors and, and I and senior system staff had had a, a summer retreat where we lined out some of the elements of what you'll see now. Uh, uh, Rebecca Martin has met with the provosts in their summer retreat and talked through a lot of what uh, you'll see helping to get us here. We have now also begun to share <clears throat> these ideas that I'll talk about today for a strategic planning process with our faculty reps, with our academic staff reps from around the system, and as the student government leaders return now to campus, we'll uh, be engaging them and looking at this with us already. So as Regent Bradley indicated, a lot of work has already gone in uh, to getting us to where we are today, and I thank you all and, and everybody else who's been, been part of it. Uh, we're calling this the UW System Strategic Framework to Advantage Wisconsin, and let me just say a few words about the title. Why a, why a framework? Well, uh, this is not an institutional strategic plan. Uh, each of our institutions has its own strategic plan. This is a system-wide framework, uh, a strategic framework designed to do really two things. Uh, uh, number one, to guide uh, the motion of the entire system with all its moving parts, and you know we have lots of them across the state, to guide that motion in the right direction going forward. And secondly, uh, to provide us all, and most especially this board, with a shared uh, context for decision making, especially in areas where we know we have major decisions coming at us. And, and I think you all know that, that, I, that almost all of you have spoken with me saying uh, uh, when we bring uh, resolutions forward on major policy issues, you would like to have more background than you sometimes have so that you're not feeling like you're making ad hoc decisions without fully understanding the background, context, history, or without fully understanding what the implications of making that decision at that point might be. Uh, uh, there are two particular big issues that a number of you have said to me, we need more context, we need a framework for decision making on. One of those is in the area of tuition and financial aid policy. You just took a decision in August on, uh, on uh, that regarding next year's tuition. Uh, we have had in this past year proposals which you've approved for differential tuition come forward. Uh, we will certainly, I guess I'd say, in the next year have more uh, proposals for differential tuition of one kind or another come forward. What's the context for decision making when those come forward to this board? Uh, we have a tuition and financial aid policy group working that, uh, again, you know, I think Regent Falbo and Regent Crane are members of. I spoke with them uh, at their last meeting and they are, uh, I think, making good progress and will be able to come back to me with uh, some pros and cons of a variety of different kinds of uh, tuition uh, structures that I will then sort through with you and make some recommendations about where we might go in the future. The other issue that a number of you keep coming back to me with where you say we need more context is the role of the UW colleges in relation to the rest of the system, in relation to the, to the technical college system. Uh, and again, 
a lot of that conversation sparked by proposals we've had or we know are out there from the tech colleges, for instance, to uh, offer uh, liberal arts and science programs from uh, the UW College's commission on its own future, the Chancellor Wilson impaneled. So uh, uh, I'm, I'm highly conscious that we need, uh, again, a decision framework around that issue. So uh, Chancellor Wilson and I have talked, and I will be impaneling as part of, of this strategic framework process a system-wide group to help us look at that. He has a number of groups working already internally in the colleges and extension based on the commission report and will coordinate the work of, of those groups with the system-wide group. So on those two specific but big policy issues of tuition and financial aid and the role of the colleges, we'll, we'll blend that into the larger strategic framework development that we'll be doing between now and February so that by February I hope to come back to you with some recommendations on both of those uh, areas as well specifically. Um, so that's why we think of this as a framework and, and why Advantage Wisconsin? Why did we settle on, on that name? Well, uh, I'll remind you of three of the principles for strategic planning that I laid out in that May presentation on the growth agenda and beyond. Uh, these were really uh, ideas I suggested about how we wanted to handle this, this effort to do our planning. We wanted it to be, number one, uh, outside in, number two, lead from behind, and number three, it's about all of Wisconsin, not just the UW system. And those three principles are all the piece in my mind. Um, we believe, of course, going back to the advantage word, that uh, the University of Wisconsin is one of the great advantages that the state of Wisconsin has. And uh, the point of this framework building activity at some level will be to figure out with others outside of the university how to use the UW best to advantage Wisconsin in the 21st century knowledge economy. So with that, the agenda for today is, as you see laid out there, I'll walk you through in a PowerPoint the basic elements of this strategic framework, uh, and then we'll pause and, and I hope have lots of questions, thoughts, suggestions, reactions to that. Uh, uh, from the board and, and chancellors, provosts, others uh, certainly welcome to join in on that as well. Uh, at, after that discussion, uh, I'll turn it back to President Bradley who will talk about the role of the regents and other key Wisconsin leaders in this. Again, that uh, uh, outside in uh, kind of principle says that we've got to engage people on the outside in this in some way that respects their time and interest, but at the same time earns us some buy-in from legislative leaders, the governor's office, community leaders, business leaders around the state as, as we go forward. So this isn't a surprise to them or something that's of no interest to them by the time we get it done. And uh, Regent Bradley, I know, wants to have your ideas on how we, we do that at that part of it. And then uh, Don Mash will, will uh, step forward and talk a little bit very practically about what the next steps are in the process, and he'll have a handout that will further describe some of that. So that's Mash and all, which sounds like a new bourbon to me. I don't know. <laughs> so Don will be serving bourbon by about uh, 1130, <laughs> with any luck. Uh, all right. Um, uh, you know, we can thank in this state our uh, four mothers and four fathers uh, for their willingness to invest in a really first-class university system, one that spurred successful industries, strong communities, uh, has been partly responsible for this state's reputation in this country and around the world as a very progressive state. Uh, the people who came before us were willing to invest their money, their energy in putting this system together, and, and they've gotten us to where we are. And that. Um, that symbiotic relationship between this university and the state and its citizens will only become more important in, in a 21st century knowledge economy. I think we are at a crossroads, as the slide, slide says right up at the top now, uh, in that increasingly competitive uh, knowledge-based global economy. Uh, the future will be shaped uh, by three interrelated factors, uh, the talent of our people, uh, our ability to create and uh, uh, retain and attract high-paying jobs in, in uh, dynamic companies to this state, in this state, and the attractiveness of our communities to businesses and to residents alike, uh, some of whom may come with or because businesses are there, some of whom may come because the communities are attractive in and of themselves and worry about getting a job after they arrive. We want both. 
Uh, again, I think we're at a crossroads. Wisconsin, we know, has gaps based on the conversations we've had that I've alluded to earlier, has gaps in all three of those dimensions. We know we're below the national average in the percentage of our people with baccalaureate degrees, and we know uh, from Dennis Jones in particular that, that the U.S. as a nation is not keeping pace with other nations and the, their growing investment in their higher ed systems. I think Dennis told us, didn't he, that the United States is now the eighth most um, educated country in, in the world. We used to be higher. Uh, uh, we have a very strong uh, R&D enterprise in the UW system, but Wisconsin, we know, falls below the national average in indicators on venture capital and in successful commercialization. So we have the basis to do a lot of good work there. We're not doing all the good work we will need to do in the future. And while we certainly have many strong communities around the state, our largest urban area in Milwaukee is experiencing significant social and economic challenges. And, and statewide, we know we're not attracting enough young talent uh, to maintain a thriving economy going forward. We, again, know we rank almost at the bottom of the 50 states in attracting baccalaureate degree educated people into our state. Uh, the net result on the simple uh, level of salary is that the, our relative income is not keeping pace with the, the national average, as this slide demonstrates. The per capita income gap versus the U.S. Uh, 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 creates a, a taxing capacity issue at the state level that we hear a lot about, creates competitive issues for our businesses and personal hardships in some cases for our for our uh, families and, and citizens. It certainly creates an atmosphere where, for better or worse, uh, 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 families are highly employed. We are, the last time I looked at this, one of the, if not the most highly employed state uh, in the country with more of our citizens uh, of working age in the job market in one way or another than almost every other, other state. Uh, the answer to this salary problem, I believe, is not to scale back uh, our vital educational systems and other resources. That is, uh, in a knowledge economy, we cannot cost cut our way to success. Now, we need to always be cost cutting, especially cost cutting administrative overhead costs. We've done a lot of that in this system. We will continue to do that. And we have long, uh, uh, they're getting to be book size examples of individual initiatives in which we have we've done that. We always want to be as militant as we can in, in keeping our overhead costs low and doing things most efficiently. But we can't simply, if, if our strategic plan as a state is we're going to cost cut our way to success, we won't be successful. That's very, very apparent. Uh, I think the answer to what we need to do is increasingly evident in places all over the state. Uh, you look at the positive impact UW-Madison is having in the capital region economy. You look at our three campuses serving the I-94 corridor in the Chippewa Valley between the Chippewa Valley and the Twin Cities. You look at the role that UW-Milwaukee is increasingly taking on in the metropolitan area there. Uh, you look at the lead, lead roles that UW-Green Bay and Oshkosh have taken in the New North and the Fox River Valley. And I can, I can go on and on and on. Uh, we need to fully leverage those UW assets across the state to advantage Wisconsin in the 21st century knowledge economy. Um, this next slide tries to capture how our traditional missions of the three of them, teaching, research, and service, translate into what we need to be and do for the future of Wisconsin. Uh, you've heard me say this before. I want us to be, as the UW, the premier developer of advanced human potential in the state, working with our partners, serving all residents who, who need to stay current in a world where knowledge is changing so rapidly. Uh, I want the UW system to be uh, a key catalyst for creating and retaining high-paying jobs that employ not only our own graduates, but also graduates we will help to attract from out of state. And I want the system to be an invaluable asset to our communities across the state, tackling the, the pressing community issues in, in all of Wisconsin's regions. Uh, there are lots of them coming out of our communities. And this is kind of the role of the university as uh, the 21st century face of the Wisconsin idea, if you will. Um, let me share now the, the basics, the basic elements of the strategic framework as we've developed developed it. This, this is it. This is our, you know, one-page map for the long-term 
root to our vision for advantaging Wisconsin. Uh, if you look at the box in the upper left-hand corner, uh, uh, an awful big part of our core mission is to prepare our students, prepare them with, as it says, the integrative learning skills, the multicultural competencies, and the practical knowledge that they need to succeed in their uh, communities and in their professional lives. Uh, those integrative learning skills are about the liberal arts and sciences, the initiatives we have going there, the renewed uh, emphasis on their importance, multicultural competencies obviously goes to diversity in the global society we live in, also part of the liberal arts and sciences education, but beyond that as well, and, and the practical knowledge, the, the professional programs, the graduate programs, the internships, the uh, service learning, a whole bundle of things there we're doing some of and we need to do more of and keep them evolving. Um, in order to, uh, to increase our positive impact on Wisconsin, I think we need to commit to, to some very basic goals, and they are listed in the, the right-hand side uh, under Advantage Wisconsin Goals under the People, Jobs, and Communities heading. We need to significantly increase the number of graduates and educational opportunities for Wisconsin residents. We need to, in, in the course of doing that, improve access and, uh, and retention and graduation rates on our campuses. That's key. Uh, we need to expand our research enterprise as well as, as link more effectively that research enterprise and programs to entrepreneurship and business development across the state. And we need to strengthen our communi communities by uh, in increasing our service impact uh, through engagement and research and learning applied to the states and the community's greatest challenges. And there again, we have a different demographic from some other states. We have Unlike uh, Minnesota, for instance, where so much of the population is now uh, gathered in that huge Twin Cities metroplex, we have medium-sized communities all over the state that, that want and need the university to step up and make a difference in uh, what they do and how they're perceived within those communities across the state and indeed uh, outside of the state. Um, and on the lower left-hand side there under the enabling strategies he heading, you'll see three capacity strategies, I might call them, that should undergird the achievement of those goals on the right-hand side. Uh, one is to grow our financial resources by broadening and diversifying our sources of funds and further developing uh, talented faculty and staff that we have. And uh, it's interesting, as I was thinking about this one, you know, we've had a conversation recently, and we'll have another one at this board, meeting about uh, the, our relationship in terms of bank card programs with lenders. We are increasingly seeking out and establishing new relationships that bring new sources of revenue to the university because, uh, again, we've uh, been in a situation where the percentage of our budget coming from the state has, has shrunk. Uh, we have lots of questions about how we do that, what the ethics of doing that are in some instances which one of those relationships we, we should pursue how and, and which we shouldn't perhaps pursue. Those are some individual uh, uh, issues that have come before this board that, again, I think we all have a feeling we need a more elaborate framework of understanding to make good decisions on. Uh, another enabling strategy in, in terms of our operations. Uh, one way we know we can be more efficient in operating is to enhance flexibility, uh, some deregulation uh, from the state, from other entities we work with could, could really help there. We've made that case before. Uh, we need to continue to lay that case out strongly before the state, uh, convincing people that if they let us do certain things, we will be able to be more efficient. But the trade-off means that uh, there's less, re less regulation, less control by the, the state down at the at the 500, the 1,000 foot level in the university. Uh, and thirdly, uh, uh, the, the general area of collaborations. Uh, how do we uh, create multiple new, stronger collaborations, leveraging our system, the relationships within it, our cross-campus work, cross-institutional work, which is much, much more robust now than it was when I came into this system 11 years ago, uh, but is getting more robust and needs to continue to all the time. And our, our relationships with others, with the, with the PK-12 system, with the tech college system, with the, the private colleges, and a whole range of other organizations, institutions, corporations. We are now in new and different kinds of relationships <coughs> with them, the ones we used to have in the past. How do we think about that in terms of a framework going forward? 
We'll come back to this slide in a minute. Um, as we learned from Dennis Jones, strategic planning in, in a large public higher ed system is a complicated animal. Um, there's planning at the campus level that's important for those institutions and for their regions. And, and a heavy uh, top-down planning model, I believe, will not work in this kind of environment. Uh, but there does need to be planning in a framework 30,000 foot way at the system level, I believe. And I think that's what we want to be about. Uh, and that needs to address statewide public policy needs and big picture issues. And it, that kind of planning, uh, the results of it, should make the whole more than the sum of its parts, should add value by making the whole more than the sum of its parts. Uh, we've tried to design the strategic framework to do just that, to enable us to fully leverage the multiple assets of the UW system for the good of Wisconsin's common future. Uh, and our work over the last few years in things like charting a new course and development of the growth agenda, the, all the activity in terms of leadership, planning and retreats uh, that I've talked about has, has gone before and has gotten us to where we are now. We've done a lot of work already. I'm emphasizing that. We're not starting from scratch uh, in this process, and that's a good thing. Where do we go from here? A few words about next steps, and then, as I said, Don Mash will, will talk in a little more detail about this uh, when he uh, comes forward. Uh, we plan to have uh, seven what we'll call think tanks around each of those seven elements of the framework, and we'll put that framework slide back up in a minute. Uh, uh, those think tanks uh, will, will uh, take uh, the work of those think tanks will take us through December and, and will include broad input from, from others, not just the people on those think tanks. In other words, uh, uh, we'll do things like have a, a, a public advantage Wisconsin website. And, the think tanks will have the ability to tap into each other's research online. Uh, we'll also have face-to-face uh, -face communication sessions with business and community leaders across the state. And, and through uh, UW Extension, reach out broadly to citizens across the state. That is, we, we hope with David Wilson and his colleagues' help to have a kind of electronic uh, uh, town hall meeting statewide using the county extension offices and the electronic network that, uh, that we have through them across the state. Uh, so through that process, which will uh, run through December in terms of the think tank work and then on into the beginning of, of the new year as we try to, to finish it off, we'll integrate and synthesize the ideas that come out of them and present you with a final strategic uh, framework. We don't expect it to be fundamentally different from the, the elements of what you just saw, but it'll be fleshed out with more specific goals, uh, system-wide initiatives and strategies that will enable us to achieve those goals. So uh, this kind of enriched strategic framework will create the overarching context, I hope, for individual campus new initiatives and, and for resource deployment across the system, as well as for uh, policy decisions by this Board of Regents. Uh, this is more than a development process, uh, but more than a budget development process. I want to emphasize that. Uh, it's connected to the budget development process. If you look at, at the right-hand box on this slide with the February 08 to May 08 uh, uh, heading over it, uh, you know, this may seem uh, strange given where we are in the current budget process. But uh, around February of 08, we'll need to start soliciting ideas from our institutions about the 09-011 biennial budget. And by May, June, we'll want to have all of those framed up under this new strategic framework to present to you for your approval in summer of 08. I know that seems a little startling, given where we, startling given where we are now. But, but, uh, but that's the way the, the cycle will go. So, um, uh, it's more than a budget development process. We hope this will provide an overarching focus across several biennia as we go forward and as these goals shift and become more far-reaching. And we will, uh, every couple years in connection with the budget development process, the biennial process, uh, uh, tweak what we've got and come back to you to make sure you're still comfortable with it as a, as a, a large strategic framework. Um, but it is also intended to be a practical tool for the development of our next biennial budget proposals. 
So in a little bit, um, Regent Bradley will, uh, will lead the discussion on ways to involve the regents in, in working with other Wisconsin leaders to build that vision. Um, again, we've made a lot of progress already, and uh, I think that this effort, I hope that this effort and the action planning around it will keep this conversation going, make it even more public, and in the long run make our positive impact uh, much greater. Um, one of the things I think we've talked about that we hope this process will lead to is a new understanding by the state and its leaders about the university, about what they expect from us and about what they're willing to invest in us to meet those expectations. If we can get there with them, this will have been a very valuable process for the state and indeed, indeed for us. Um, so we'll put the strategic framework uh, basic slide back up and before Regent Bradley gets into his part of this, I want to now open uh, uh, this up for discussion uh, with the regents and again if others want to chime in that would be, uh, that would be perfectly acceptable and helpful as well. We need your uh, reactions, comments now uh, and going forward, uh, but now is your first shot at it. Given the very condensed timeline that we have here to get this work done, uh, we're already underway, as I said at the beginning, to some extent, and we're going to really ramp this up. If you don't tell us at this meeting, you're going in the entirely wrong direction with this idea. So with that, Regent Bradley, we're open for discussion. <clears throat> Thank you, President Riley. Uh, could I just make a, a housekeeping a comment first? This is going to be a statewide discussion, we hope. And we're all on television as we sit here. We are video streamed and audio streamed. We've heard some um, comments from our audience, and that is, other than when the regents are speaking into the microphones that they have right in front of them, uh, there's a people aren't able to get some of the initial comments made by speakers. So. We have responded, and as you see, we have one microphone on this side, two microphones over here, also the microphone at the podium. So in deference to our external audience and in our efforts to make our deliberations uh, transparent and available to everyone and, and really magnify the audience that participates in our discussion, the regents certainly need to speak up into their microphones and then if anybody um, other than mem people around the table wish to speak, would you please go to one of the three microphones to, uh, in deference to our audience. So with that, um, are there any comments or questions of President Riley on what you have seen thus far regarding this, the outlines of this uh, strategic framework? Regent Bartel. Are you able to describe uh, in greater detail the composition uh, of the think tanks and the, and the think tank process? Yeah, Don Mash will do exactly that when he comes on. He'll actually have a handout with a charter for the think tanks, questions for them, comments on membership. So we'll get there, Regent Bartel. Regent Green? I was, uh, at, at one point, uh, Kevin, you talked about liberal arts, and uh, that is, to me, an important part of the conversation, what that, where, the, where the liberal arts fit into uh, to our understanding of, uh, of uh, a university education. And related to that um, is, um, um, and I don't know how to, how, how to characterize this exactly, but discussions about what education is, uh, which it, it, it seems to me, and you've heard me on this before, that a lot of what we talk about is, is meeting qualifications so that you get the degree and become employed. And I think education is more than that. And so somehow I would like to see that as part of uh, the conversation. I couldn't agree more. And let me just ask Senior Vice President Martin to comment on the work we've got going on now through this Liberal Education in America's Promise Project. We've got some really interesting conversations about exactly that going forward with faculty and students uh, on our campuses. and. We very much want to roll those into this process. Rebecca? We're actually 
undertaking a, a series of events over the coming year and efforts working on the this part this liberal education project that we're part of a national project and as many of you may know Barbara Lawton is involved at the national level in that project and is helping us to craft what we're going to be doing here in Wisconsin. Um, we're going to come, we hope, in October and give you a fuller presentation of that. Um, but we're looking to underscore the importance of liberal education in the undergraduate education for all of our students. And when you see the, think, the questions for the think tank team for the first one, prepare students, um, you'll see some of that very clearly there. But there's more to come. Several of our campuses are already underway in this regard, trying to look back at their general education requirements and say, what do we need to do different going forward? And those campuses, there are two or three of them actively involved now, I think will kind of take the lead in the discussion with the rest of the campuses in the system on this topic. Regent Thank you. Um, thank you. Well, first I should say, I. I if you haven't seen yourself on Wisconsin High, <laughs> plenty of opportunity is played over and over and over again. <laughs> and you may not want you may not want to see it. And uh, but I should say that I, I resigned from the board of directors of Wisconsin High the day it went on the air, uh, under the assumption I knew actually nothing about television. Um, Kevin, I want to talk about uh, something, and I don't know where it's going to fit in, but uh, and that is our recurring communication problem here. And I'll give you one example. Uh, uh, the burden I bear is I hang around with politicians and journalists, and I have to. Um, that's the only way to get golf partners. <laughs> <laughs> they apparently don't have day jobs. Um, but over and over again, um, these last couple of months, I have been asked or heard the comment, where did you guys pull that tuition number from? And I said, well, it was a, it was a tuition number that was sort of dictated to us and whatever. But there was clearly no comprehensive where we found that 5.5 .5 number. And if, and of course you're, you're dealing with people who are paying attention more or less. And it's a it's a good question uh, that if we were asked where where did we get that 5.5 .5 number, would be be able to answer it in 30 seconds. But this is uh, I think symptomatic and and here even even when you use advantage Wisconsin, it's a very defensive and apologetic way to approach things. Here's the idea that, well, you might not think that we're very uh, important, but here's the way we can advantage uh, things. And I would question that, that using language that is not forward looking and not even, and, and in fact, uh, aggressively forward looking. Um, and my question, uh, uh, basic question is, here we are sitting in a, in a uh, forum and a system of administration that hasn't changed since merger. Where, when are we going to get to a relook at how the structure of, of the system and the Board of Regents and the President should be for the future, not as it was constructed for what is now the past. Couple couple reactions. I think on the communications challenge, always a huge challenge, and you can never communicate enough and well enough. And I think when uh, you get into the discussion this morning that, that Region President Bradley will lead about ideas for how to get the external world connected to this process, we ought to go back to that question. How can we better communicate generally? Uh, as to the word advantage, I mean, we can call this thing anything we want to call it. And we, want, we should call it something that communicates what we intend well and, and excites people. Uh, and I think I'd like to have reactions from a number of people on the name. We can certainly change it. I guess my interpretation is exactly opposite to yours. Uh, advantage, Wisconsin, seems to me to be forward-looking. I don't know what's backward-looking about it. Um, 
And the notion here is that, that the university is a great advantage that the state has uh, and that what we need to do, what we need to see ourselves doing and position ourselves to do is to, to turn that advantage into something really spectacular that positions the state as one of the most competitive states going forward in the 21st century. Now, figuring out what to call it that says that is always a challenge, and different people interpret words differently, but let's, let's have that conversation. Your third point about structure, if that's what it's about, I think this is the time to have that conversation. Uh, now, what I disagree with is that this is the same system that you and others put together 30 years ago. It's radically different in the way it operates uh, in many, many ways. Um, I can cite the revenue issue, I can cite the collaborations with baccalaureate degree programs on all 13 of the two-year campuses, none of which existed when I came to the system. I can cite the collaborative nursing program, I can cite the huge numbers of online courses and degree programs that didn't exist 10 years ago, and I can go on and on and on. Uh, so there's been lots of change within the carapace of the structure that was put together 30 years ago. Do we want to change the structure? If we need to, we ought to talk about it. Uh, we certainly want to have a system that's nimble enough to respond to the challenges of the future that I hope we can lay out here. <clears throat> uh, Regent Loftus, I'd just like to make a, a suggestion to your friends who are asking where we got that number. If they go to the audio or the video stream of the meeting where we did that, and if they listened or watched and listened the presentation that I gave in introducing um, our discussion on the operating budget, <clears throat> I believe that they would hear that if you start from the assumption that we had to make that we've got the Joint Finance Committee budget, and if you start with the assumption that the state is going to contribute its traditional share to a faculty pay plan, the amount of tuition revenue that you need in order to accomplish the goals of educating the same number of students we did last year, funding the growth agenda, and making a beginning a four-year commitment to increasing or decreasing the gap in our faculty pay plan is 5.5%. So if they had listened to that or seen it, they would say, now I know where you got that 5.5% number. Regent Wall. Um, well, I just want to respond a little bit to Tom, but I also want to congratulate Tom on, on Wisconsin I pulling it out of the depths it was in. It really is a, a, a new day for communications in Wisconsin. And yes, it will repeat it a lot, and we'll probably have a lot more repeating on the Big Ten Network because nobody's watching that either. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm all for the Big Ten Network. But having said that, complimented Tom, I'd like to suggest that his politicians and journalists spend a little more time reading rather than playing golf. <laughs> <laughs> and secondly, they take up a new sport called tennis because if you played tennis, you'd know that the word advantage is a very positive <laughs> thing to matter. Now, I'm done with your time. Uh, I, I, uh, I, do, I just have two general comments. and It's from somebody who's been sitting around Wisconsin for all too long. You know, the trouble when you, you, you strategize and you come up with new visions or you do some hard thinking is you've you got to remember that we just didn't come into existence yesterday. I mean, there's been some great minds before us doing the same thing. And I, I hope we spend a little time looking at what's changed since the last kind of studies took place. And one thing I would like to point out, and I don't have a therefore to it, is that when you look at our budget of $4.2 billion two years ago, you know, there was a time when 50% of that came from the state. Instead, today it's coming from the stakeholders and the consumers. It's coming from the students, their parents. It's coming in tuition and fees. And it's also coming from um, success, and that is program revenue and grants and aids and gifts. And we should take a hard look of why those funds are coming in. And in doing so, when we communicate, I, I don't want to sit here and try to lecture the legislature. Um, that's where I'll listen to Tom on how to handle that, but I do want to make sure that we spend a lot of time talking to the new stakeholders, the people who are really providing the greater share of our budget, and that is the, that's the students, the parents, 
the businesses and the people making donations. And, and that will be a challenge for us. And I don't have any solutions, but I'm anxious to get started. Regent Salas? Yes, I wanted to uh, partially respond to the question of how we arrived at the 5.5% uh, because I participated in the discussion, and, and so did you, uh, Regent Walsh, uh, and others. And uh, if you recall, my initial recommendation was that we go with the uh, uh, cost of living increase. And uh, I believe uh, Frida at the time had brought forth uh, certain uh, uh, graphs that when Regent Walsh uh, uh, um, called her attention to some of the uh, cost of the uh, growth agenda, including the increases for our faculty, there wasn't in any way how we were going to be able to accommodate those two, uh, I think, very important elements to our budget proposal without considering those uh, costs that would not be incorporated in my initial recommendation of the uh, cost of living, uh, maintaining a cost of living increase uh, for our tuition. And that's why at the following meeting when the 5.5 uh, proposal came forth, that was one of the key elements that I thought was very important uh, for our budget, or that is the, the, the growth agenda and the uh, faculty increases. And as you recall, uh, uh, President Bradley, that's the reason that I uh, ended up voting for this proposal. Uh, uh, there was no uh, uh, other alternative, I thought, at the, uh, at the time. Now, in regards to the, uh, uh, st the planning that we are uh, pursuing uh, or that we're laying the framework for uh, today, I wanted to make a uh, recommendation because charting a new course, as you noted in your discussion, President Riley, did give us the impetus for the, where we're at uh, uh, today. And one of the uh, committees uh, uh, that I participated in at that, at that time uh, in the charting of new course was the relationship, our external relationships, in particular the relationships with the, uh, uh, our state uh, representatives. And during the whole year of that committee work, uh, uh, we invited legislative leaders to participate in the key question of the day at the time, or that is, how do we maintain quality? Uh, 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 facing the huge deficits that we did and maintain access, and in particular to uh, low and moderate income students. And that's a question uh, that we still face uh, uh, today. And there's a committee that is working on that matter, and I think that format of continuing to invite that particular group of stakeholders, or that is uh, our chief executive and our, uh, uh, our legislative leaders should be incorporated in the think tank or in the process uh, of those uh, delibera deliberations because it's something that we should do jointly. It isn't something that, that we should do ourselves and then formulate it and then say here uh, state legislators or here Governor Doyle, this is uh, uh, what we have uh, uh, for you. They should be involved as we involve them in charting a new course from the uh, onset when the moment comes for us to discuss those uh, 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 relationships. And in particular, the question that we still have, the legacy of the deficits are still with us. That's why we couldn't uh, maintain that just uh, in the tuition increase, just the cost of living increase. Uh, uh, and I think I'm really looking forward to the committee and the, the, uh, uh, of uh, how we deal with those, uh, the impact of those tuition increases on the uh, uh, low and moderate income uh, uh, families. So. Regent Davis. Thank you. I too, um, like Regent Walsh, I'm excited about moving forward and I presume based in the, on the opening remarks uh, from Kevin that we will have an inclusive approach from the beginning throughout and it will built, be built into the process. Um, I, I just want to uh, make an argument for um, um, the enabling strategy around resources that if we can really in a bold, um, maybe out of the box way, uh, attack this issue of um, ensuring that, that we are affordable to all and finding alternative resources for, um, to offset the um, uh, significant threats to financial aid and related um, sources of income, I mean sources of, of aid, if you will, for those who can't afford on their own. I think that needs to be a real high priority within that enabling strategy that we identify alternative resources um, because in addition to hoping, praying, fighting, cajoling, you know, humbling um, <coughs> Congress and whomever, shame on them for, meanwhile back at the ranch, you know, people 
are finding that to be a really significant impediment to looking forward to a future that includes higher ed. So I think we should boldly look at identification of resources, and I'm assuming perhaps there's going to be a um, think tank team on this issue. I just don't want it to be resources for operating the system only, that it also be resources to ensure that students can afford to go. Good, and we do have this tuition and financial aid working group already working, really looking, I think, they are looking at the, the issues you're putting your finger on, Regent Davis, and we'll roll that as a piece into the larger resources. Look, and I think, you know, we do, and what I said to the tuition and financial aid group when I met with them last week, I guess it was, was we've got these two kind of vectors going in opposite directions. One is our saying in this state, and everybody's saying increasingly nationally, a la Dennis Jones, we've got to move from having 30% of our population with a post-secondary credential to 50 or 55 if we're going to be competitive as a nation. So we've got to get a lot more students ready, willing, and able, including financially able, to come into post-secondary education. That's vectors going in one direction. At the same time, we've got this rising tuition vector going, in part because governments have decided they need to spend their money on some other things rather than public higher education. Those vectors can't keep going in opposite directions, or else we won't get to where we need to be as a state or a country. And that's a very, very big challenge that you're putting your finger on, and I hope we'll begin to, to uh, try to seriously address that in the course of this process. Regent Connelly Kiesler. I agree with the issues that you've laid out, but my question is, how do you see the regions involved in this? You know, the charting the new course was pretty clear. Regions, committees, and then we brought other people in, and then we all think we were on the best committees. I say public service was the best, and we moved around the state. We did all this great stuff. But how are we involved in this? Because it sounds like the think tanks are already underway and going. In meetings, they're not. Okay. Um, so are, are we going to just be, be on one of those? Is this just information coming back to us? I'm trying to get my arms around what our role is going to be in. This is, this is the region's plan. With system staff, is this a system staff plan that we're just adopting? What, what's the plan? Don Mash is going to get into a more detail and frame out what the proposal is for these think tanks, none of which have been formed, none of which have, have members. And then when we conclude asking Kevin about what he has said thus far, um, I'm going to try to lead this group in a discussion of what's the role, what's our role, but what should we be doing in trying to pull this discussion together? Uh, Regent Rosenstein. Yeah, thank you. Um, I was struck when Regent Salas was talking about um, charting a new course in our, our um, external relationships that uh, one of the strengths as we were talking about financial aid was that we did have some of the players from the legislature and the public <coughs> present. And um, I know that you have a group that is meeting currently on the whole range of topics, but just looking at the assembly budget, frankly, and some of the cuts that they chose to make were in that category. And I think probably just given that the legislature changes its dynamics year after year, and that was four years ago, we had that conversation, that it's worth kind of coming back to the conversation about why it's important um, what happens if you don't pay attention to it, uh, what what are the implications as it relates to jobs and to, to training in our state? Just a whole group of things that people may not be focusing on, but in fact in this next year will be critical in that conversation that we're having. So perhaps to expand that group to include some external players as well. Thank you. Regent Burmester? Is the Wisconsin Covenant on the table for our current tuition study group or committee? Are you talking about the Covenant? Um, we haven't we haven't directly addressed that yet. Okay, but and will we hear more 
about how because um, I think that fits definitely under the enabling strategies and really growing. We're going to have to get our hands around the covenant. I think that's right. I mean, I, again, I go back to the basic concept here that in a state where you've got a flat projection in terms of numbers of high school graduates over the next 10 years are slightly declining, how do you successfully do a growth agenda? Well, again, I think there are two ways. On the one hand, you have to get a much broader, deeper cut of the current school population ready, willing, and able to come into some kind of post-secondary education because the absolute numbers are not going to rise. You have to have more of the numbers we have coming on in, larger percentages, and that's what the covenant is designed to do, as I understand it. And on the other hand, we have to do a lot better job with those million or so adult, many of them working students in the state who have some college credit but not a credential. How do we bring them back into our, our classroom? That's the way you do a successful growth agenda in a state with the demographics that we have. So I, I agree that, that the covenant really is absolutely essential as we, as we look to enacting any of this. Coming in a whole bunch of other uh, uh, initiatives we'll need to have. Regent Key? Well, I think the framework is definitely on the right track. And I especially like the word flexible under operational excellence and would hope that we would expand that to include flexibility in our delivery of credits for students. And we, Kevin mentioned online, and there's a lot of things going, but I think that's going to be the key to growing our numbers of graduate is increased flexibility in our offerings. I didn't know if that you were including that in that category or if it should, could be added somewhere else. Sure. But um, we see this nationwide. Students are so interested in online and evening and weekends and you know, web enhanced and all these different kinds of deliveries. So um, I hope that will become a part of the framework as well. You will, and I'll, I'll mention in my re president's report tomorrow a couple of good current examples of some new flexible delivery methods. Thank you. Regent Pruitt? Um, I, I just wanted to make a, a point that sort of follows up, Kevin, with what you were just identifying, sort of a pitch for innovative outreach strategies in this process. Um, you know, I think that it's, uh, it's very important to reach out to the business community, the legislative leadership, the political leadership and state. But I think clearly one of the challenges, it seems that I think we could all agree uh, going forward five years, ten years down the road, is how do we give everyone in this state a stake in the future of the University of Wisconsin system. And part of that is building coalitions and it's, and it's speaking to them, but part of that I think also is hearing from them. Uh, and I think, I think one of the real vexing challenges at least that, that, that I, I still feel inadequate about is trying to understand what, is, what are all the factors holding, holding back those, those folks from accessing the system. And we talk about non-traditional students with the Kobe, the Kobe initiative, the relationships with the technical college. This issue of pre-college programs and the Wisconsin Covenant, and we have some wonderful programs across the system, Future Phoenix and others. Um, but trying to really sort of expand that effort going forward and figuring it out uh, of what, it, what will cause more and more people in this state to have kind of a skin in the game right. and really, you know, believe in the future. And it relates to Regent Solace's issue of access and low and moderate income families. So as important as sort of our traditional ways of outreach and listening to people and talking to kind of the usual, rounding up the usual suspects, I hope, we'll, I hope we'll round up some new suspects <laughs> and hear from them <laughs> about what it is that they, they care about and what it is that they can, that, that, you know, how they see their state going yeah. forward. I think that's absolutely vital, and the, uh, as you were talking, Regent Pruitt, that we'll be talking a little more this fall meetings. Again, Don Nash has been working with a big group that's not just UW, but the other sectors in education and the ACE and the Ad Council on this Know How to Go campaign, which, again, is a new kind of outreach effort, effort using new technologies and using rap music and rap poetry to, to get at a segment of the population that we often probably haven't very effectively gotten to at the right time in their lives. We need lots of new strategies to, to do that. Again, if the growth agenda is going to be successful, if Wisconsin is going to be successful as a state in the future. Regent Loftus? Um, a couple of points and a, and a question. Um, I think one of the issues on the tuition 
and the understanding of it and the communication. And I didn't investigate this, but uh, apparently <coughs> it's my understanding that the university it gets to move forward based on the joint finance com committee version of the budget. The rest of state government has to go based on what the budget would be when it's passed. And this dichotomy, this distinction is, is a hard one to get, a, to get across. Um, Second, uh, I agree with you, a lot has changed in 30 years, and I think the greatest change is this whole attitude that uh, chancellors and campuses should be more autonomous and figure out their own direction for the future. And I think, Kevin, your leadership has absolutely fostered this idea, gone completely away from a cookie-cutter uh, mentality. Um, but the question in Chapter 36, is, is this still the skeleton? that we can build on for the future. The legislature only does one thing. They change laws and enact laws. And, and so that's, uh, that's a question that I hope that we can get to. Uh, finally, um, on the think tank's financing, we saw in the New York Times, I, I guess it was last week, that uh, uh, universities across the country are simply making up for lack of state support uh, by tuition, tuition differentials, fees, uh, we certainly have been doing the same thing. If, if this is the future, it could very well be the future. Um, I hope we have some vehicle to address that alternative financing method for the future, taking into account one assumption that the state funding at a level we need for real growth will not be there as, it, as has happened in many other states. I think that's one of the questions that the, the uh, resources group is going to have to grapple with, one of the big ones. And I'm going back uh, to your comment earlier about Advantage Wisconsin and then Regent uh, uh, Walsh's comment about Wisconsin I. And I should probably note that thinking about this uh, with uh, former Governor uh, Dreyfus and former Chancellor Dreyfus announcing that he's written his last uh, column uh, now as a columnist. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was at a talk that he got up to give, and he got up at the podium, and he, he was kind of fumbling around with his papers, and he took his his glasses off, and he kind of looked like he was lost, and I started to think, geez, has he lost it? He was, and, and he finally put them back on, and he said, well, I don't know what, uh, what all this Viagra is about. I need Iagra. <laughs> Well, that's another kind of Wisconsin eye. <coughs> Region Loftus. Is that a segue? I thought it was a segue. I thought you had Well, uh, let's take a couple of minutes now to try something that um, we, we don't ha often have an opportunity to do. Uh, <clears throat> we're not going to solve for X. There's no answer, we just need to spend a few minutes and try to air the best ideas that this group has on a key question before we get into all the, the details. So if you assume that Wisconsin, not the University of Wisconsin system, but if you assume that Wisconsin is going to have to do something to prosper in this 21st century economy. Like almost every other state has decided it's going to have to, it's going to have to do something <laughs> different. And many of those higher achieving countries that Dennis Jones told us about have had these same kinds of conversations. So if you assume that we've got to do something, I'd just like to have us share with each other ideas on how would you go about convening this large statewide discussion? Let me give you a couple of, uh, of examples. Ireland decided that it had to have a whole new approach. And Ireland got its labor, got its parliament, uh, got its higher education community together, uh, and, and also its government in its taxing structure 
and said, we all have to come together. We all have to, first of all, make some concessions in order to propel Ireland as a country together in this new economy. Long and short of it is Ireland now has the second most prosperous economy in Europe. Uh, Finland took a look at itself and said, our economy is pretty much, or has been pretty much based on natural resources. But in this new economy, that isn't going to work for, su for success. So Finland, with its higher education community, and also with its government, has taken a new approach. Another example, um, a couple of meetings ago, I think it was, Kevin mentioned that the state of Ohio, which certainly has been affected, affected by the new economy, decided that it was going to freeze tuition. Well, it decided it was going to freeze tuition in response, or, along with the legislature, saying that we are going to pump in new money to the higher education system in order to accomplish certain goals. And as we're about trying to accomplish those certain goals, the higher education community is going to be held accountable for out certain outcomes. So this is a, a statewide effort to achieve certain goals to help the state of Ohio. If you just stay in the United States, different, different states have taken different approaches on how to convene this large statewide discussion with multiple participants. Some states have said, well, it's the governor that is going to convene this multifaceted, broad-based public discussion. And some states have said, well, we're not going to do it having the governor be the big convener because then you're going to have people who say, I don't want anything the governor does to be successful. So it sort of stops it right there. I'm not aware of any state where the, the legislature said it's the legislature that is the convener of this broad statewide discussion. There may be. I'm just not aware of any. Other states have started out or have convened this big statewide discussion through the business community being the leader and the business community saying, we know what we want is, or we think we know where the state has to go. So we need the legislature to buy into this big forward idea. We need the higher education community. We need the community colleges. We need the technical schools. We need the, the taxpayers. But the business community has really been the, what I call the, the convener of this thing. In a couple of places, it's been the higher education community that has done this. And from my read, I, I think uh, there's a, a weakness there in that um, it needs to be a, a bigger uh, call to action than if if the higher education community, which can be seen then by some as, well, obviously you're calling for this because obviously this is going to meet some of your own um, uh, agency or institutional needs. So countries and states have debated about how do you launch this thing to get the essential participation and the greatest buy-in of whatever direction you ultimately take. I'd recommend two materials for your reading as we uh, try to come to grips with this. One of them is a report of what's called the Blue Ribbon Commission on Higher Education that was put out by the National Association of State Legislatures. So here are eight leaders of higher education committees in their states. Eight legislators, four Democrats, four Republicans, issuing a report that in a very general distillation ends up saying, uh, we haven't called it the growth agenda for Wisconsin, but you know all of the states are going to have to do something like the growth agenda for Wisconsin. I mean, they all come to the same conclusion. They just call it something different. And this report says higher education, is essential to any solution that is going to be fashioned for economic prosperity. 
Higher education has been part of the problem, but we legislators have been part of the problem also. And what they end up saying, again, in very general terms is, we're going to have to pull everybody together to try to work on this broad-based new statewide discussion, not just a higher education discussion and, and not just a budget discussion in a legislature. Another publication that uses different words but essentially says the same thing is Innovation America, a, a report put out by the National Association of Governors. The approach that that report, written by governors, for governors, says in order for your state and in order for our country to prosper in this new economy, you're, we're going to have to innovate. And innovation leads to competitiveness, competitiveness with other states, but just as importantly, competitive, competitiveness around the world, and then it lists what all these countries are doing. And this report by the National Association of Governors doesn't say the growth agenda for Wisconsin, but if you distill it, they're pretty much coming to the same conclusion that you're going to have to do something like the growth agenda for Wisconsin in order to move your state economy forward. And they say to, to all the writing to governors, uh, this is what you're going to have to do. You'll have to figure out in your own state how you're going to do it. But this is what they say has to be in common. You need to figure out what your state resources are, what your state industries are, what you can do to differentiate yourself as opposed to other states and other countries. And secondly, you're going to have to have a regional focus in developing these solutions. Growth Agenda for Wisconsin is identifying regional needs and how the university can respond to those needs to come up with regional solutions. So either uh, President Riley had advance notice several years ago of what both of these groups were talking about, or he was spot on in identifying and coming up with what Wisconsin ought to be doing, because this legislative report and this governor's report ends up pretty much saying the same thing. They just use different words. So if you think about our industries, if you think about how Wisconsin's economy is evolving, and if you think about the regional needs, the regional economic development associations, our particular mix of stakeholders, and frankly, our particular way of doing business as a state and our, our political uh, atmosphere, our political situation currently, how would you do it? How would you pull together and get pull together groups in order to launch this broad-based public discussion, this big vision discussion in the state of Wisconsin? If you think of some of those examples, let's talk about some best ideas. We don't have to solve for X. We don't have to come up with a solution today. I'd just like to hear some discussion. Reach of office. Well, I think the brilliance of the growth agenda became the fact that it was the basis of our budget recommendations, that it was real. No one's going to participate in a process unless dollars are going to be directed by that process in the end. And I think the higher education community can, can lead this, looks like almost that's the choice at the moment. Um, if, if the results of this would become, and, and we would advertise this, as this is going to be a, a, a base document for our budget. This, this, these recommendations, this is what we're going to act on when we make a bu budget recommendation. This is going to be tuition policy. This is, this is going to be uh, growth, in other words, how many of students. But in short, this is going to direct dollars. So if you want to be part of where do, of, of directing dollars, you better be part of this uh, process. I think a process that doesn't have money attached to it is a tough one. Regent Burmester. I think you would want to do some of the things we're already doing. 
um, you'd want to pull together the PK through 16 educational leaders of a region along with the business, economic, and workforce development leaders and you would bring them around the table in that region to address the framework. And I think that uh, we already see in our state um, the energy and um, commitment of groups like that. I think that the New North is an example of a tremendous uh, impetus around a growth agenda regionally. And you said that the two things were what state resources differentiate you from other states. Well, in our state, that's going to be different in different regions, uh, what our assets are and what our resources perhaps are. And the second thing you said was regional solutions. And I think that we, we have the beginning of that in our state. There's a lot of this economic development cluster work that's been going on. Um, I think it just needs to be organized. So how would you launch it other than as an initiative of the Department of Public Instruction? <laughs> just kidding. I think I'd use the, you could use the PK-16 State Leadership Council. I think that's why those, our predecessors actually had the foresight of, and that's why they put labor, uh, they put, uh, business, industry, they, they put all those players on the statewide council, but it's never really been given that charge, but you would have then. And, and also, a former Board of Regents actually um, had put another part of the framework in, which was that each chancellor was supposed to develop a, P, a regional PK-16 leadership council. Um, that was kind of the foundation that was being laid by our predecessors for knowing, as they did in the economic summits that the university led. Um, so I think we've got a lot of assets and a lot of things um, that we can build upon where we've seen success. Where does the charge for the PK-16 council come from? Is that a, a, a legislative <coughs> charge? Is it? No. So it's, a, it's an agreement to come together. It's an agreement among the, uh, the president of the university system, the state superintendent of public instruction, the um, president of the Wisconsin Technical College System, and the executive director of the Wisconsin Independent Colleges and Universities. And what legislative representation is there on it? There, are, there is legislative representation from both parties. Appointed by? Or just, just ask invitation. to join. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was part of the original design. Regent Davis? I don't know what um, you know, structure or I should say um, what body should lead or would be more effective than another body in leading the, the initiative because it seems based on your lead in that there are arguments for any one of them, um, including the Board of Regents being the impetus as well. But what I would want to argue for is that, sort of piggybacking on what um, um, Regent Pruitt said, making sure all voices are present. I think that a voice that, that needs to have more of a seat at the table are the voice of parents. Um, and, I don't, and I don't sense that we've figured out a way to do that in a big way. And I think that that would have some influence, to figure that out, would have some possible positive influence over legislators, for example, um, and would have some influence over students and their um, choosing to or being incented to um, want to get a higher education. So I just think, and, and I've learned in my little world that I'm in today, on my day job, that um, we d there are more than one of us who um, have that as a challenge, figuring out how to get the parent voice really involved and engaged in a meaningful way. Um, the, other, the other positive of doing that is that we get to educate and inform parents about how to and where to go and what the benefits are and where you fit and how you can reinforce and all that kind of stuff. So I really just would say whoever starts it, which I think should, um, should include a parental voice in a bigger way than we've been in the past. Regent Crane. 
I want to uh, to uh, build on uh, Danae's uh, comments um, and related to her day job, because I think uh, one of the one of the groups that I have not heard spoken of as needing to be involved in the conversation is um, there are a lot of per, of um, agency people in this state who work with children and with uh, families who know a good deal about. Um, a, I'm also speaking in support of the pre part of the K-12 because I am in, in, in the life that I lead in, in Green Bay, I spend a lot of time talking about what happens with children well before they get to school. So that I don't know that this is very helpful to you and how you're looking to structure, but I do think there are people who know a great deal about uh, the conditions and, fa and family situations of people in their communities that are, are not spoken of usually as being part of the discussion. Here it comes, folks. Regent Rosenzweig. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for answers, Peggy. I'm looking for answers. Well, well, this is a possible. I'll try it. I'll try it on precise. Um, Regent Burmeister, just m mention a group that is existing already. And as I'm listening to you, the charge is pretty expansive to include the public, uh, uh, all of our publics, and, um, and, and the professionals, the people um, who, the businesses. And you also gave us a timeline, <laughs> which I was listening to. And uh, that's a difficult challenge, I think. <laughs> so what if you took the P-16 Council concept re regionally and you expanded it to include some of the players that are not there presently? Um, and um, because you've got a structure already. And what I'm thinking is that this structure is kind of unwieldy as you lay it out. How do you start organizing it? And it seems to me you'll get to know to uh, spring and still be perhaps still organizing or just getting it on your way. So I just, I, I throw it out there as a possibility. There may be other structures that are there already, but that one seems to have the players uh, certainly labor there. Some of the things that we're going to need if we want to push forward uh, with a consensus document, something that people buy in across the state and does deal with the regional issues. Parents are um, parents are involved on uh, K-12 parents, but the point about the higher ed representation of parents, that would be an example of the enhancement that would be needed. Yeah. So if you're a parent, how do you how do you come to be participating in the PK through 16? Well, in the officially in the PK through 16, it's the president of the uh, PTA, state PTA. Oh. But you could designate any there any organization of parents or there are a number of state and Regent Loftus and then Regent Brettel, did you also have a come? Okay, Regent Loftus and Regent Spector. Um, the, the, the focus of this question, who's, who's going to do this? Um, that's the focus of the question. That's the focus of the question. Okay. Um, what is there in Chapter 36 that empowers the President or the Board of Regents to start this process? Uh, I can't remember the exact uh, section, but it's very early in Chapter 36, it says that the Board of Regents uh, shall uh, something like determine the needs of higher education for the state of Wisconsin. Do we need anything other than that to hang our hat on to start such a process? I don't believe so. I would ask the political question about whether you would think that the Board of Regents convening this big buy-in discussion is the politically more astute thing to do as opposed to what other states have done or something brand new. I'm not going to count on comment on political astuteness at the moment, but... Um, I've got you down. Yes, yes. 
I, actually, I don't see the political game <laughs> what's going on at all uh, on the other end of State Street. Um, well, it, uh, if, if the statutes say that uh, we have the power to do this, or the president, or the board of you, then if we don't do it using that, um, then we should make that decision that we want someone else to do it. Regent Spector? Well, I just build on a little bit what's been said. I don't know much about the PK 16 uh, organization. It sounds to me like it's a very good thing, but I don't think it's the right thing for what we're talking about here. I think we need um, an entity whether new or not, that's perceived as being a little bit above the traditional fray of who gets what money at K-12 or higher education or uh, vouchers or charter, any of this stuff, the education fights that we've had. Uh, if you follow what Tom said earlier or David or somebody about you have to get the money involved, I think it's very difficult for us to be the leaders, which we should, under 36 or otherwise without having the legislature and the governor very much involved. They have the money. Uh, we don't have, if I understand it after two and a half years, we don't really have the money. And, and it's their decisions on the money, which I think regrettably now are so short term and so lacking in any agreement that it's penalizing our state relative to others, uh, that we need to get them involved. We need to get a credible source to say we're losing ground, as you guys have been saying, and I believe relative to other states, relative, to, forget the countries for the moment, just other states. Uh, if we want, if I want my grandchildren to come here and live in Wisconsin, then we better have an education system and an economy that will make that sensible, or my children. That's what people think about a lot, I think, and if we show them that that isn't all isn't happening the way it was, we thought, 30 years ago or whenever. I think they'll be very affected by that. And I think it will get the legislature and the governor, with our leadership, perhaps, and the business community and all these other groups you mentioned, to say, wait, we got a problem that has to go beyond the day-to-day -day fighting that we're doing. We have to come up with a blueprint that's going to last for multiple biennia. Uh, you mentioned compact <coughs> you're going to talk about, but this compact idea that you'll develop, I'm sure. But in order for that to happen, the average person has to realize that's in their interest as well as the state's interest. And I think that requires that we get legislators, the governor's office, the board of regents, other entities, but under our leadership perhaps, uh, to come up with both a rationale and then something that's practical and sensible and uh, holds water relative to what's going on in other places uh, and, and meets many of these issues we've been talking about. Regent Burmester? Regent Spector made me think of something. Um, the governor a few years ago had his, the governor's economic growth council and um, I think some of the chancellors will remember that, and, and Kevin and I served on that, as well as the other education leaders, but it was his economic growth council. Perhaps, I mean, I'm just throwing out ideas, you're looking at brainstorming, perhaps based on what you're saying, that would be something you could do. We, the Board of Regents could ask the governor to convene his, reconvene the economic growth council with this charge. I that that and council that, didn't have a specific charge when it was first. It's very formed. important, Libby, to have the legislature and the government, not just one mm -hmm. or the other. Yeah, that, that's true. I learned that in the that 12 would, test. That's, that's that true. That wasn't uh, just a Just a little part bit of, of history, very quickly. The legislature had passed in the budget uh, that they would create a K 12 education task force. The governor vetoed that and appointed his own task force, which we should have done or our Libby's representative. 
Um, and I don't think it was as effective as it would have been if they, the two of them had been able to agree to have one task force that represented both. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> what, um, what you two are describing here is, is similar to what Nebraska um, ended up doing in, in calling for um, the governor and and then you know I guess the governor or a designee. But when it got to legislators, it wasn't and or your designee. It was the legislators, and it was the uh, head of whatever their um, higher their state higher education um, institution was. <clears throat> and the the idea was we really need the first string sitting here and not talking about higher education talking about economic development for Nebraska and that necessarily leads to what is our K through 12 system doing to contribute toward these goals what could we be doing differently what's the role of higher education <clears throat> it's like the the statewide discussion about what we're trying to achieve brings along higher education and brings along K through 12 right. rather than Higher education wants to convene a discussion that is going to now solve the economic problems of the state. Just a, a different approach. We get brought along because you can't do it without K through 12. You can't do it without higher education. I thought you were going to say, like Nebraska, we should have a unicameral. <laughs> I wasn't going there. Um, if we could, if we could take uh, another five minutes on this section, and I want to leave enough time for. Uh, getting into the details, which some of you really love, Regent Salas. I, I think one of the um, one of the considerations that we should uh, have in regards to the to the format of this uh, initiative, I think it it, it should uh, it should add value. Uh, it should enhance the uh, local strategic uh, plans of the campuses that we have. And just to give two short examples. Uh, one, because I'm from uh, Milwaukee, as you uh, all know, the work that Chancellor Santiago has uh, been doing with the medical college, with the business community, in particular with uh, the G7 uh, group, and as a result of my buddy uh, campuses visit stuff over the last two years in Eau Claire and River Falls, the, their collaboration, their networking, along with Stout and the uh, and the uh, Volk Tech uh, 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 of that uh, area. The, the, these are the things I think that we need to look at, some of those activities that are going on and see how our planning or our strategic planning adds value to those uh, activities that are going uh, uh, there. That should be a major consideration in, in setting up the format of how we approach in these uh, regional uh, areas. I think you keep that. Regent Walsh. Um, you could, you, before I could answer this question in my mind, I, I would need some facts. And, and some of those are basically w what are the best practices in other states? I'd like to have somebody lay it out for us, tell us what it is. Um, because, you know, we, we spend a lot of time spinning our wheels re examining things other people have examined. But it's, at the end of the day, when it comes to the state of Wisconsin, historically, if you look back at what commissions created action, you had the Kellett Commission, mm -hmm. uh, the Judicial Task Force that Jeff was executive, I think you were executive director of, uh, the Cable Television Task Force, which although it didn't result in legislation, it resulted in enough dialogue in a bipartisan way that there was results. And then, of course, we had the merger, uh, which they by statute had to answer. But the, uh, the simple fact is you don't do this alone. You have to do it. Which you have to eliminate the partisanship, and the way you do that is you make everybody part of the solution instead of waiting for a response. And I would involve, uh, why not go to WMC? Why not go to Johnson Controls? Why not go to WPSC and say, we need some money to fund this? And we ought to do it together. And we ought to do it all seeking a solution wrapped in economics. And I totally agree with Tom. It's all about money. If you don't end up with a therefore we get some money or therefore here's where the money goes it isn't worth it and it'll be just another charting which which I thought was a wonderful exercise for us didn't go anywhere but it was a wonderful exercise uh, just a little vignette 
Um, and, and, and this is surprises me because I would have thought I'd known this, but Bill Gates was here recently and said that the University of Wisconsin supplies more computer graduates to Microsoft than any school in the country. He's not happy with Google going to the University of Michigan, and he'd love to come here. We don't open these doors. We're not there yet. Now, there's some things that are going to happen in this community that will start it, but there's all sorts of great stories out there, and those are stories that everybody agrees on no matter what your political party, because it has to be wrapped in money, it has to be wrapped in economics, and we've got to get the, all those stakeholders together. Now, that's my view, but I certainly would like to know what happened in Minnesota and Ireland and Nebraska, but we need to know that before we make a decision. Just uh, one, if we can move down to the five miles above the planet a bit, I mean, what process would we put together where the chancellors buy in? Um, we just assume they buy in? Uh, there's the famous public health case study that when the dangers of smoking were first known, the, the first reaction was to get doctors to quit smoking. There was not going to be any broad uh, progress without that first step. Hope this analogy works. Uh, but, but it seems to my observation is the chancellor bought into participating in the growth agenda because the agreement was that if they brought it forward, it would become the basis of our budget submission to the governor. That is the money we have, that, that, mu that submission. So uh, I hope at some point we, we make sure that um, our generals in the field are brought into the plan. We have examples of that in this country where not happened. <laughs> Let me say on, on that one, reaching off this deep, um, the work you're seeing presented to you today grows out very directly of work uh, the chancellors have already been involved in through the retreat, through the the development of the of the growth agenda, and and uh, that's part of the reason we're trying to cast this as a system-wide value-added framework to what needs to go on on the ground where the groups are really delivered. But if any of them wants to comment, that's fine. Chancellor Wells. Is this on? Yeah. Uh, just a couple quick things. We've been involved in trying to make the argument for this approach to the growth agenda for at least five or six years, a regional base, campus by campus kind of thing. So we're just delighted what it's matured to at this point. Uh, the New North, again, was an organization that came out of the new era that was started six years ago. It has all those players at the table. The Walking Seven is coming along, and all the, now all the regions of the state have some entity like the New North or the Milwaukee Seven, the G7, I guess you call them now. I'd like to remind us all, the governor just convened what he's calling his new business council about four uh, months ago, four or four, five months ago, Milwaukee. I was actually at that meeting. Then we hosted it at the New North in Manitowoc this summer, just a month or two ago. And it has all those guys, the New North and G7, are all part of that operation that the governor has launched. Just so you can keep that in mind as a group that already has a lot of the key uh, stakeholders um, at the table. And then quickly, while I have the mic, we talked about this too. There's a, there's a question that has to drive all this. You know, should there be a greater sense of urgency about Wisconsin's future? I think all of us would say absolutely. Is there a coming crisis for the state of Wisconsin? Uh, I think there is. If so, what is that crisis? I know what it's not. It's not the structural deficit in the budget. That's just a manifestation of the underlying aspects of the crisis. And I had to most simply say what that crisis is. It's Wisconsin is losing fast its comparative advantage for its future. So advantage Wisconsin is designed to bring, make sure Wisconsin reestablishes its comparative advantage for the future so we have a bright future for our children and grandchildren. Thank you, Chancellor Wells. Uh, and thanks very much for your ideas. Uh, Regent Vice President Pruitt will take all of these under consideration. He's going to distill <laughs> this, and, uh, and, and, and he will solve for X. If we could then uh, move back to President Riley and uh, the, what I would call the, 
the, the specifics of the framework. Um, I'm not sure that question was answered. I don't want to speak for her, but... We're it hasn't been, and Don Mash will now answer. Beautiful. Senior <laughs> Vice President Mash. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we, we have some handouts um, that should be distributed about now. Um, and those would be the, those that are, got them folded? Fine, good. And I, and I want to take you through the uh, think tank activity. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, say one thing if I could, because what we're going to be doing, we're going to keep the framework up on the screen and we're going to talk about think tank activity, how that might work, and how activity around the state would enrich the discussion about those seven pieces, and how we would then come back months later with an advanced, enhanced strategic framework. But I would like to say this to try, just one quick comment to connect what we've been doing this morning. The first part of the discussion was about the strategic framework, our work, how we see it, how we clarify it, and how we communicate it as we think it can impact Wisconsin's future. When Regent Bradley began to initiate the second part of the conversation, we were at another level, and that was a level of uh, leadership, visioning, um, partnerships, expanding the conversation um, for this to succeed, which we have more control over. The fleshing out of the second part um, uh, needs to get some, uh, some legs and some oomph, and we have to figure out how to extend that conversation. This will do some of it. Uh, so, in front of you, what you have at this point is a uh, handout which begins with the slide that's in front of you, and that is really the summary slide for the strategic framework. Every one of those boxes, prepare students, three enabling strategies, and then people, jobs, communities, has a think tank. Um, and the think tank will uh, involve relatively small groups of some of our best thinkers. We are thinking perhaps eight to ten people. Uh, and we've talked about this in terms of how large and how this might work. And in our discussions, thinking about a smaller group rather than a mammoth group, the way to extend that conversation is with communication and discussions um, in a lot of different locations that will feed back into the think tank discussions. Even though that group is a small group, they will be incorporating discussions that have happened elsewhere. Um, the question that was asked earlier, who would serve on these think tank groups? Uh, you may have some suggestions. We're trying to figure out how to get some of the best thinkers within the UW system, as well as some obvious external folks who can add value to each one of those conversations. Some of you may think that you can, and you would want to spend some of your time uh, as a part of a think tank. Or perhaps you would feel more comfortable feeding your ideas in as we bring regular reports back to you each meeting and provide other opportunities for that sort of input. You may also have a couple of people that may have come to mind when you looked at the description of one of those and said, you know, so-and-so would really be helpful there, even though that person is a, isn't a part of the uh, UW system, we would ask you to get those names or any suggestions you might have uh, to us for consideration 
um, which we will then use to form up and get the think tank groups working according to a charter and some uh, framework that's established for them and their work that is a part of this uh, handout. Um, the, uh, the final work of the think tanks um, will uh, be focused uh, according to a template we're going to try to provide each group so that when we are talking about our leadership group, and the leadership group really is um, President Riley, the chancellors, and President Riley's cabinet, and the ongoing feedback and interaction we have with you, to try to figure out which ideas, which projects, which activities have been identified as the most compelling to advance the work challenged questions there for each of those um, each of those boxes. So this matter of extending the reach beyond the think tank um, is very important. Uh, President Riley mentioned in his presentation that David Wilson, uh, utilizing the resources of the extension, for example, is planning a day statewide in every county. Uh, where there will be a conversation there among the citizens in that county. And this framework will be a discussion, the discussion topic. Talk about it. What can we do? Do we have the right focus here? Do you have some thoughts that we can feedback? President Riley will kick that off uh, electronically from here. When we left the last business roundtable discussion, some of you will recall that we said next step would be to have some uh, business-focused discussions regionally around the state to talk about Wisconsin's future. Again, this piece would be a discussion piece, perhaps the discussion piece for that kind of thing. We are going to have a study website set up to share materials and to uh, advance uh, communication. Uh, the chancellors play a key role in this. Uh, chancellors are out and about speaking all the time to any number of groups. They will be doing what they do, what they do, uh, to put it uh, uh, succinctly, is they try to talk about the future, the future of the region that they're attempting to serve and the future of the state, and it comes back to the work of uh, that particular campus and how that could be uh, uh, forwarded. They're going to be leading also in their regions uh, these conversations. We have provosts, we have chief business officers, we have any number of governance groups that come to Madison and meet regularly. They're going to be engaged in discussions as well so that these discussions which we'll have at future regent meetings which will keep everybody tuned in, every monthly meeting of the chancellors to provide some leadership and continue to focus direction will continue to shape the kind of activity that goes into the think tank deliberations, even though a small number of people will be designated uh, the think tank. Um, the matter of taking this conversation to other groups that some might think are aligned with the notion of growth and development for the state. The Wisconsin Technology Council, um, <clears throat> Competitive Wisconsin, uh, name the group. Um, certainly will add value to this and extend the conversation. And I think that kind of activity gets a little closer to the sort of thing that uh, Regent Bradley was uh, leading in terms of a conversation with um, clearly aligned state leaders and uh, uh, and thinkers. So what we're going to attempt to do over the course of the next several months in order to come back in September at your meeting with an enhanced strategic framework having pulled all this together, <coughs> I'm sorry, um, did I say something? I'm sorry. What I meant to say was February. Thank you. 
October's not correct. <laughs> February, excuse me. This process between now and uh, February, where we would have an enhanced framework for discussion, fleshing out each of those seven with what we think are the most compelling initiatives to pursue. And following that period, then the campuses will begin over a period of time. Uh, we don't need to put the, the uh, time frame back up there to specifically inform the enhanced framework with the kinds of initiatives um, that they have as a part of their strategic plans. Every campus has a strategic plan. And a part of that time period, as was mentioned earlier, is budget development. Um, and we have put this time frame together in a way so that this process recycles with reviews of the enhanced framework essentially every two years. We've been asked a couple of times, how long is this plan going to go? Well, we're thinking that maybe a five-year uh, strategic framework makes some sense with an upgrade every two years so that you always have a five-year um, um, agenda. Uh, ultimately, this activity and the work that's going to accompany it becomes a communication document. Uh, it adds value to direction and focus, but it also helps to communicate and develop uh, a broader understanding of um, what we're trying to do uh, and how we're trying to um, add value to Wisconsin's prospects um, for the future. So we're going to be coming back to you at every meeting with something related to this. And we'll make that decision based upon some strategic assessment of where we are and where we think your, uh, your input would be, would be most helpful. Uh, it could be progress reports. It could be references. It could be presentations. It could be discussions. It could be all of those. And uh, every month, uh, the leadership group, uh, President Riley, of course, interacting with uh, the region leadership, but the chancellors at their monthly meeting interacting with us as we process this um, uh, moving forward. So that essentially is the, um, the work of the think tanks, but we need to think of the work that they're going to be doing as only a focal point. And from that, we're going to be extending this conversation in ways that we're still um, developing, and we're going to use electronic communication to the extent uh, that we can. So with that, I'm going to conclude my comments in terms of uh, process. Questions for Don? Yes. Oh. Remembering that I, I raised the question about um, hoping, that they, hope, hope, hoping that the approach will include a bold and out-of-the-box approach to addressing issues around um, affordability for our students, whether they're new or non-traditional. And so as I look at on page 9 at think tank number 5, resources, I, I really do think that we should beef up the uh, description of how those issues are going to be addressed. Currently, they say related issues of affordability and financial aid. I think that's way too weak. I think they deserve their own attention because of the, I would argue, crisis point that we are at and certainly going to be at in the future, for the future, if we don't boldly step forward to figure out how we make higher ed affordable. So I would think they deserve their own bullets and their own focus and higher priority and atten of attention. Uh, secondly, related to um, comments of other regions, um, Burmester and um, Crane and others, uh, and uh, Rosenzweig, I will, in just about everybody, let me just say, every, almost everybody commented on the need to um, maybe in a different way engage the legislature and, and, and I said parents and we talked about other um, um, community organizations and what have you, and obviously students. And I think that, that maybe one way of doing things differently than we've done and, and differently than this document seems to portray we will be doing to get that voice in is that maybe we ought to go to those organizations um, and ask them how to engage them and who to engage on their behalf as opposed to assuming that we know the answer to that and when and at what point and in what way. So I don't know if I'm talking about the statewide PTA. I don't know how you get parents' voice in, 
but I think parents can tell us how to get parents' voice in, and I think I'd rather hear from them how to do that than to assume that I know how to do that. So that would be a recommendation, because I think they need to be a part of this, and maybe getting them bought in would be one way to do that, would be to ask them how to get them in. Just a suggestion. Regent Rosenzweig. Um, I guess I'm, I'm kind of puzzled about the composition of the think tank, so let me be uh, straightforward. Um, when you suggest that uh, we could uh, uh, suggest people that we think would be strong attributes, um, we could actually um, identify ourselves. Uh, what is the timetable for doing that? And, and, and so it's not clear when you, how you intend to organize these think tanks on what timeline and, and how we would be able to think about those folks that might contribute in the best possible way. We're planning to begin forming up these groups um, next week. We have a lot of names already. They're primarily uh, internal UW system names, of course, but we also have some external names that we think fit this that have uh, uh, come out of the process that we've had in our internal discussions. And we're planning to put in any names that come forward now into the hopper as well. For participation on the think tank group, which is a smaller, you know, smaller group. And these groups are going to be working over the next several months. And probably we would be expecting them by January, early January, to uh, uh, put their best thinking in front of us. I'm talking about the leadership group now, and this includes the chancellors as well. And we would then try to make some sense of uh, the uh, issues, bring some of them together perhaps, try to get the most compelling of those to share with you uh, at a succeeding meeting. Uh, so that's the time frame that we're talking about here. And we've, we've, uh, we know we've taken on um, a challenge in terms of uh, the time frame, but we think that um, at the framework level, not at the individual campus level, uh, we think we can uh, um, do what needs to be done to have this process work and begin to cycle for our decision making. <coughs> Regent Bartell. I can understand why in creating a strategic framework that you want to break it down into the components, component parts. And we have seven parts here, which we can see by the arrows are, are quite related to one another. And, and the question I, I guess I have is, how is it that these think tanks are going to coordinate with one another? How are they going to understand what the other ones are doing, what directions they're going, what conclusions they're reaching? And uh, because I, I would think that the, that information would affect what the other ones are doing. Well, the coordinating function is going to be handled largely by the leadership group and the way we staff each of the think tanks in terms of the cross-communication. Uh, our website's going to help to pull together the, uh, the products and the comments and the thinking along the way. Uh, we have a very um, uh, large communication task from a coordinating standpoint uh, to achieve. Uh, but it, they won't be simply working independently um, for three or four months and then we'll be seeing their work or where they're headed for the first time. Uh, we've got some staffing planned. We're going to have some uh, system leadership staffing each one of the groups. Um, some of us are going to get to as many of the actual discussion sessions as we possibly can and try to monitor this process. And that includes the external conversations that would be occurring and, and feeding some of those thoughts and suggestions back into the think tank participants. Uh, Regent Keene. Um, just a procedural question then following up on um, Peggy's. So are you asking that we email you suggestions of people's names uh, this time next week? Is, is that what you're looking for? Yes, if you, have, if you have suggestions. And then you will proceed with asking the suggested candidates? <laughs> or would you like us to ask them in advance if they're interested in participating? Well, that would, that would uh, mm -hmm. 
save us a step. Certainly, uh, we would have to get in touch with sure. individuals and say, we would like you to serve. Would you be willing to serve? Each, uh, each group would have a team leader. And then each we group have, will meet three times? Well, about we're still framing that. Okay. But there's going to be a time commitment involved, mm -hmm. uh, certainly. Uh, whether it's face-to-face, -face, whether it's telecommunication, each group's going to have some flexibility to put together its own way of working. I mean, we have some thoughts and some suggestions, and we're trying to give them some guidance, but we're not going to micromanage something they think can be productive. I was thinking Regent Vice President Pruitt would probably want to head up the group on more graduates as the former head of Kobe. <laughs> Region Colony Keister. Are, are you going to make an effort to to have regional representation on each? So if you have ten people, that you're pulling from each region on the committee, so that you don't end up with a whole group from Madison. Yes. Okay. As well as. Uh, <laughs> That's <laughs> Uh, come out right. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, you know, if you're going to have 10 people on this, you have that opportunity to go around the state and pull from all over because, you know, they're great thinkers in every region on all of these issues so that you don't get technically weighted because every region has very different issues of that. Yes, uh, we're planning to do that. I mean, we, we had the same sort of conversation with the chancellors. As you might imagine, when we're thinking about a group like this. Uh, Someone would suggest that perhaps every campus ought to be represented on every think tank. Um, we talked through that and decided that wasn't the way to do it, and that the communication around it can keep these groups more manageable and a little smaller, but we'll make sure that we have campus representation in the process and keep their leaders, not just the chancellor, uh, engaged through other meetings. Regent Loftus? Uh, Don, three, three questions. I mean, think tanks by definition are peopled by people who are out of power. Uh, <laughs> uh, we've got uh, the whole next, uh, the whole next democratic administration parked in think tanks. Um, but, but their power comes from the fact that they come up with ideas for the future and they criticize uh, the president. But, but the power comes from that. There will be a change in the future, change of administrations where these, these ideas actually will get a real audience. And so the first question, what, what, what is, the, what is, is that the power of these that you see? The, the second question is, we have a think tank, don't we? Isn't there a... a, a uh, a unit somewhere around that we have asked to do research for the system. And the third question is, are you asking us to approve this? Have we approved it or we're just being informed? Well, um, if uh, earlier we, we asked for some suggestions about some things when some comments were made about the, the name of the uh, the effort. Same thing is true with think tank. Maybe that's not uh, a good word. And if you're um, suggesting that it might be a bit misleading, we could call it something else. No, I'm, I'm not. But I don't I mean, think that, it's misleading but, at all. But, but okay. But I mean that that would be um, the sort of thing. We these are labeled working draft, and we're prepared to come away from this session and make some uh, uh, some changes based upon suggestions. But, but the power of the groups that are convened is essentially the ideas that they will come, the force of the ideas they will come up with. Yes, yes. And our review of those ideas in terms of uh, uh, what we think are the most um, um, significant and which ones will advance those, um, those goals uh, best. I would just add one other thing, uh, Regional Office. Uh, it is quite possible, as we thought about this, take number, uh, well, we call it number seven, but it, uh, or excuse me, the communities one, stronger communities, research and learning applied to the state's greatest challenges. Uh, we have thought that a think tank, and I'm not trying to plant an idea here, 
uh, we have thought that a think tank could uh, think about this a bit and consider that in terms of quality of life to communities and may decide that what needs to follow this four or five month period is the appointment of maybe a think tank or a group or uh, uh, some internal that would look at, for example, uh, the nursing shortage in health care in Wisconsin and what to do about it. Or it could uh, um, ask a group to look at the um, extent to which corrections uh, uh, is um, consuming um, uh, large numbers of dollars and so forth. Uh, there, there is some flexibility to how this work can get extended in other ways in addition to what we might th typically think would be this group reports back and then we... Okay, well, just one thought. I mean, this, the system campuses are peppered with think tanks. Um, the La Follette School here just uh, published a great work on charter schools. Right. One of the nation's leading experts, Professor Witte, is right here. Uh, they just published another work on how research institutions are serving low-income students. Um, this is happening all over the system. How are they accessed by these think tanks? Where do they fit in? There's a footnote in here that mentions the La Follette School, but it's a footnote. Well, can, can I jump in here? I think um, we, we will try to draw on all the expertise we can get once we define a little better some of the avenues we want to pursue in each of these seven areas. Uh, I and mean, people at La Follette or people at other department centers across the system, we hope, will be drawn in who have expertise in, in some of the specific topics that these seven groups will decide to focus on. And some sense of where we think they might focus is captured by the questions you see on the hand down in front of you. What was, it, what was occurring to me, regional office, as you were talking about the think tanks and what they are in the, in the political electoral world is that one of the advantages we have here is that we have the new administration in place. It's you. The, at the end of this think tank process, we'll analyze what we get, and I hope to come forward to this board with some specific action recommendations for you to vote on and to tell us we will do this differently, we will take on this new project, we'll stop doing this this way. And you'll have the ability at that point based on recommendations I hope to make informed by this kind of broad-based thought across the system internally and with the external partners we will pull in, hopefully good recommendations informed by that kind of thinking. So that, for instance, back to the, the, the uh, tuition and financial aid issue, what I've asked that group to do now is to go forward looking at a whole variety of tuition and financial aid options and give me the pros and cons of each of those options and what they think about the pros, the cons of implementing those options in Wisconsin now. When we get those, we'll sort through those. And I'll come back to you and say, I think we ought to do X based on, on that thought. And you'll have an opportunity to consider it and actually make a change in the way we structure our tuition system if you want to do that. And I've also asked them to look at the current system and give me the pros and cons of that. Maybe we've got the best of all worlds right now, but we just don't know it yet. But that's, that's the kind of process I think we want to follow, if that helps. And if, if people, uh, us and whoever else is willing to, or interested in doing it, if somebody convenes this broad statewide discussion that I was talking about, we will be part of it. We need to be ready to be part of it, so we need to go ahead with our own strategic plan. If this broad statewide discussion is not convened, we still have to go ahead with our strategic plan. So this needs to get going, and as Don pointed out, there's a, a compressed time framework. Uh, we as a, as a board have to get recommendations from our president on where we're going over this next five-year period. We will tie into uh, you know, any effort that I was describing if, if it comes about. Either way, we've got to be ready to uh, respond to that or we need to be able to advance higher education carrying out our duties. There was another question. Colleen? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, in looking at this flowchart, I see that there we have three think tanks 
think is focusing on um, preparing students or on, on preparing the people that we're educating, and then three on um, on the goals of these people once they go out into the state. And correct me if I'm wrong, um, but then I look at the preparing students box and it just seems like there's an awful lot to focus on in that one think tank. And so I'm wondering, uh, maybe maybe that's a deliberate effort to, to not focus on the type of education we give right now strategically, or perhaps that's something that we don't focus on system-wide, but could you comment on the choice of one think tank there? Uh, Lillian Thomas, I'm not sure I'm, I'm in. You mean as opposed to two or three focused on preparing students? I, I don't understand. The well, and, and maybe I'm misunderstanding this. Is preparing students, is, does that box pertain to the students that are in the university or before they come to the university? It has to do with the work that we do to educate our students. While they're here. Yes. And then it seems like that's a very large you know, our education of our students seems like a very large part of our mission as the UW system. And it doesn't seem, it seems like there's an awful lot to fit in one, in one think tank. Could, could I comment on that? I, I think you're right, but I think if you look at some of the wording, Regent Thomas and some of the other think tanks, um, the one on people has to do with uh, improving access and increasing the attention and graduation of students. We're going to be focused on students and education in that one. And in jobs, how do we uh, uh, develop entrepreneurship among our student group? Uh, there's some, at your campus, a major initiative now funded by the Kaufman Foundation to do that. We'll be talking about students and their education in that box. In communities, practical uh, kind of active engagement in research. We'll be talking about service learning and internships. So I don't think you need to think of that top left-hand box as the exclusive venue for thinking about the education of our students. It, it won't be. And then the other thing, I, and we've had this conversation in different ways as we've talked about this. This is a strategic framework, a collective agenda for the University of Wisconsin system at the system level. Every campus, of course, has a strategic plan, and it is the campus that delivers the education and will be uh, intimately involved in, I think, some of the questions you're raising about how this would get done and how it would touch individual students, ultimately. And also, uh, I guess that partly answers the question about how how much control would this think tank have over um, presenting curricular ideas or uh, like educational plans to different campuses? You know, uh, one of the challenges that we've had, and we've kept this uh, uh, focus, um, when we talk about the University of Wisconsin system, there are times when one might ask, well, what's the system about um, versus the campus? And how does the system add value <coughs> to an individual campus? We have tried to operate at a system level in this particular activity to provide enough direction, ultimately, and some focus based upon the priorities that have come forward from this board and other planning activities and allow the campuses to continue doing the things that the campus does without getting in the way of the, uh, um, the leadership there and the plans there. So in terms of curricular, use that as an example, I don't see this group getting into uh, curricular recommendations. And, um, and, and it wouldn't be a heavy top-down sort of you must do this campus X, you must do this campus Y. Okay, thank you. Could, could we have one more uh, question or comment and then I'd like to ask President Riley to uh, give his concluding comments. Regent Rosenzweig. I'm hearing competing perhaps a clash of, of, of strategies here. And so let me try and 
and clarify for myself and maybe for some of the rest of us. Um, I see the think tanks as creating, identifying, and raising ideas and goals for, uh, for the system. And, it, it, and you've identified the, the categories that they would focus on. And then I heard from a variety of the leadership and, and from members that we want to broaden the discussion to include, but not limited to, the whole universe practically of, of the state. And I don't see how you connect those two. I, I think you could. I think you could if you think about maybe a tiered structure. In other words, you have the think tank, they come up with the proposals, you vet them perhaps through um, existing, and we talked about several existing uh, regional groups, so that you get some fresh air in, um, if you will, from the public and, 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 and stakeholders. Uh, and then you come back to the, the regions and then we have that discussion. Otherwise, it seems to me too, almost too stifling. Um, I don't get a lot of new air coming in. But maybe that's because I'm, not, I'm structurally challenged and I'm not getting um. you, you have a comment on that? Well, only that um, the involvement of the regions is these two clashes, you mean at, at a higher level and at a operational level? In other words, a strategic framework and advancing that where there will be regions involvement, uh, as well as the other aspect of extending the conversation as far as we can and perhaps creating out of this a public policy discussion that could lead to some sort of a collective vision for the future. Um, that's another part of this. Uh, I think Regent Bradley, in responding just a few minutes ago, said uh, maybe we can do that, maybe we can't. Um, one way or the other, we need to have some sense and some leadership as to what we're about, what we're attempting to do, as it relates to impacting Wisconsin's future. Um, I, I, the only other thing I would say is when I, when I recall speaking to this group at the retreat, having reviewed the strategic thinking and planning literature uh, of late, there was an awful lot of uh, credence given to the significance of strategic thinking and strategic visioning versus to the mechanics of planning. Um, Regent Bradley was leading a discussion about the former and strategic visioning and the strategic thinking and the buy-in and the um, uh, breadth of the thinking. Um, there's no question that were something like that to happen, whatever we put on paper as our strategic framework and our focus, we'll advance it further and faster if the other piece is, uh, is operative. But Nonetheless, we must focus on a system level um, uh, agenda that can help and assist our campuses as best we can and get the buy-in and the feedback that we might be able to gather along the way in putting it together. Excuse me, but the process is the results of this exercise go to the president. The president distills them and presents to the Board of the Regents uh, items for decision. As I understand it, this this would indicate that members of the board of regents would not be members of any of these think tanks. Uh, any region that would like to serve on one of the think tanks can certainly do that. I thought I made that clear earlier in response to a question. Uh, early on, when we talked about this. Uh, we, we looked at a different process in charting a new course where the regions chaired every one of the committees that were a part of that particular uh, process. We're approaching this differently. 
Okay, I'd like to call for a conclusion of the discussion just because, well, that clock says 12.30. I think it's 12.25, but we, we have lunch, but, but we also have to um, re be respectful of our committee agendas that we have this afternoon. So I'd like to ask President Riley for some concluding remarks. Thank you. Thank you, President Bradley. A couple thoughts and just to piggyback on what, what Don said in, in re reaction to uh, Regent Rosenzweig's question, I think there will be uh, a number of opportunities to get some of the fresh air in. That is, I think, on the think tanks themselves, you, you, we're inviting you to suggest names of folks from outside the university or inside if you want, and some of those people can wind up on the think tank, people from outside the university. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think regents, if you have uh, interest in being on a think tank, let us know, and uh, you can work as part of that think tank directly if you want to commit the time to do that. Um, and then uh, Regent Spector put on the table the idea that we've kind of, we haven't given it this name, but back when he put it on the table, he, he named it uh, a, a steering committee. You know, should we consider having some overarching group that would not, uh, different from the think tanks focused on these specific items, but would help us to draw in some of the kind of outside leadership from the outside world that we've talked about here that you suggested we need, not only elected officials, but heads of, uh, of agencies that deal with children and families issues, heads of parental agencies, alumni, maybe. I mean, there's a whole group of, of folks that it seems to me ought to form up some kind of steering committee, growth council, uh, whatever we're going to call it. And that's another opportunity for those outside voices that some of you have been emphasizing uh, to participate, be heard, and to influence the process as we go along and to influence whatever analysis I do of what comes out of the think tanks and whatever recommendations that I would bring back to this board for decision at the end of the process. Uh, with that, I want to thank everybody for all the work. And there's been lots of people to get us here today. I want to thank all of you who participated in the discussion today. Very helpful, I think, in helping us look forward. We'll go and do a lot more work between now and the October meeting and be back to you with our, uh, our progress. And I'd leave you in a final comment with just one word, which is the state's motto. Look forward. Thank you, Regent Brad. Thanks very much, and thank you, everybody, for your ideas and your participation. Uh, may I have a motion to adjourn? Second. Second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay, we stand adjourned. Thank you. Lunch is uh, box lunch.